muffin keep on rising To the top rug a muffin keep striving in every way International, what they call we international When we ride palm with the rhythm over the rhythm and I come down crucial And we ride palm with the man then we sit down steady For the men on the place and with the one jam all skin Yes, yes. What is up, everybody? Joshua Casper here with Plugin Boutique. We got another incredible stream lined up for you today with Kilohertz. Two guests from their team are going to be joining us today. Just want to make sure that you can hear me and everything is working as it should. Let me know in the chat. And you can do that by just letting me know where you're tuning in from. I saw some uh, really interesting locations Japan, Mexico City, the southeastern US, I think was one. <laughs> All right. Absolutely wonderful to see everybody. Lots of familiar names. Yes. Big Bite Beats in the house. Sigh. Yes, it works. Nice. Love that. All right, before I bring the guests on, I just got some quick announcements to get through. First of all, about live streams in general. Uh, we're going to be trying to do them every Thursday until next year, obviously excluding the holidays. But I've got some big news already to share with you, but just expect most Thursdays around this time, we're gonna be doing some live streams right here on the channel. So make sure, subscribe, hit the bell, whatever you gotta do to stay notified. But some streams coming up next Thursday, the 28th, 5 p.m. UK, I'm gonna be right here going live with Universal Audio. Then, the one exception to the rule, next Wednesday, October 4th at 10 a.m., Scalar 2 live stream with David Carbone, the co-creator of Scalar 2, is going to be right here taking, a, taking over the channel and doing a scoring tutorial with Scalar 2 for video games. He just actually scored a video game and used Scalar and some Loop Cloud along the way. He's going to be showing you how he did it. Then some further out dates, Thursday, October 26th, 5 p.m. right here, we're going to be with Yuhi. And then Thursday, November 2nd, 5 p.m., we're going to be here with SSL. So some really big streams coming up. And like I said, all of the Thursdays in between those other dates, I'm going to be looking to fill them up. So let me know in the comments who else we should have here as guests on the streams. Be 
because we're doing them for you. It's not just for me and my entertainment. So let me know in the comments. Today, we are with Killer Hearts, and we are going to be doing some giveaways. And if you are active in the chat, you will be entered to win. We're going to choose four lucky winners today. And one last final announcement. Uh, we're going to be talking mainly about Phase Plant today. If you haven't tried this synth, you absolutely should. Killian will leave some links to some of my earlier videos I've done on it. It is phenomenal and uh, highly suggest it. And it's actually on sale right now at 46% off. So Killian, throw the links at the people. Uh, let them know where they can check out those videos and check out that incredible deal on Plugin Boutique. And with that, I'm going to bring in our guests. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Hi, we're doing very well. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. So this is Per Salbark and George Reese. Per, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your role in the company. Right. So yeah, I am the CEO of Kilohertz, and uh, I've been with the uh, Kilohertz from almost the beginning. There was a few months there early on when the two other uh, founders were on their own, but they weren't making music uh, software at the time, and then we sort of joined forces and um, Kilohertz like came into its proper function, sort of. Uh, I am mainly responsible for uh, design, uh, like, like graphic design and UX and stuff, so um, feature design and the visuals, and I am the one that keeps hassling the programmers <laughs> to do more and more uh, and better visuals. Do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's my that's my job. And uh, yeah, as the company has been growing a lot since we launched Faceplant, I am been, been doing, you know, whatever a CEO does. I'm, I'm still trying to find that out. <laughs> that's the best kept secret. George, what about you? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I've been around this place for about three years now doing uh, what I think is the most fun job of all, which is just telling everyone how great Killer Hearts is. Uh, my main role is uh, as a sort of uh, a content coordinator, producer, and uh, uh, to make videos and do streams like this and show and tell people all of the great stuff that Killer Hearts does, explain how it works, explain why it's wonderful, and uh, inspire, I hope, some uh, excitement about what you can do with these tools and uh, how well they could work in your workflow. So uh, that's what I do. I uh, talk a lot and I make some videos and I enjoy telling people all about Killer Hearts. Love so that's that. why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> and you do a great job. I've already uh, told you that before. Thank but I you. figured I'd tell you in front of all these people that I think. Same to you, Joshua. <laughs> oh, stop it. All right. Well, I mean, we like to just jump right in on these streams just to let people hear rather than tell them about stuff. So that's what we're going to do. And while we're doing that, the giveaways today are anyone who's active in the chat. And the best way to do that is fire off some questions at Plugin Boutique. Anything about Killer Hearts, specifically about uh, Phase Plant here, and we will try to get those answered from the most qualified people on the stream today. But with that, George, take it away. Show us around Phase Plant. Sure. Um, right. Well, we're going to go to the screen right away. Joshua, we are seeing the screen, are we? We are. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Um, let's start maybe with just a, a very quick tour through a few sounds and hear the synth before we start talking about it. So a bunch of different sounds in under 60 seconds. Love that. Big bass, right? Lots of fun. Uh, we've got some stuff that's a bit more organic. Uh, this is one of our favorites, flutophone. No so samples good. involved. Uh, wait, 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 got, George. You uh, just said no samples involved with that right there? No samples at all. This is all uh, wavetables and basic waveforms, a bit of FM. Oh uh, actually, no wavetables either, is it? No, that's mainly FM. This one is made by Rob Swire, famous from Knife Party and Pendulum. This is part of the very first set of factory presets we ever released for the George. version one of Faceplant. Can you and give us a little bit more of that? Because Absolutely. that sounds sure amazing. Thing. Yeah, I, I'll come back to my quick 60 seconds in a second. <laughs> we'll get sidetracked with some of these sounds. It's going to be fun. Oh, my gosh. 
And if you tweak a few of these macro knobs at the top, you can get variations on the sound. So this one's simply marked soprano sax, and it really does change the quality of that sound to something different. <laughs> My mind is blown. A bunch of fun to be had. Yeah, let's take it up an octave. All kinds of fun stuff happening. Let's just try trumpet kinder. This one, a little bit less commitment from Rob on that one, I think. He, he's not so sure about this, but... What? No. <laughs> and yeah, it, it sounds cool when you like switch them all over, but the the very cool thing is it's like a seamless transition from one sound to the other. Right, the of course, sure. You automate it or whatever you want to do when you perform. So let's bring it back into the flute world. <clears throat> so lots of fun to be had there. Is that um, in the? Is that in like the? It, that ships with all phase plants because. Yeah, okay. Sure, yeah, exactly. Um, we'll touch on some of the additional content banks that you can purchase separately in a moment. But um, to begin with, I'll try and stay within the factory bank so you hear what comes with the synth. Brilliant, love that. Uh, so that is one of the ones that comes with it. Um, we've got nice, simple, retro, uh, mogi bass type sounds. Um, we can do this kind of thing. <laughs> So that's a lot of fun. Um, we've got obviously beautiful pads and uh, exciting sounds that uh, make a ambience happen. Um, we've got uh, one of my favorites here is the Buch lead, which is just a very playable sound. Uh, let's find the right octave here. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, um, please, George, more so of that, actually. That's tons great. of fun to be had. These kinds of uh, chord bass pads, which have multiple pitches in the. That kind of thing. Uh, and even some really interesting sequences, which use the modulation system to set up uh, sequences of sounds, including different oscillator groups to make different sounds, basses and drums and such. So this one's, I think, a, a, a drum loop. Mixed in with that kind of um, saw sequence, or a square sequence. And that's just me holding one key. Uh, and you see a lot of the work being done here by LFOs and envelopes at the bottom uh, in our modulation section. So maybe that's the time where I should cut to the uh, explanation of the layout of the synth and how it all works, how the pieces come together. Um, if I press new up at the top here, you'll see what you will see if you start the synth for the first time. It's a blank canvas. And this is a very deliberate uh, choice. Uh, per will tell us a bit more about that later. The sort of design philosophy here is emergent design. This is for you to decide what you do with it. Uh, so we start with a blank canvas. On the left, generators. You can load in a bunch of different types of sound generators from a basic analog wave generator uh, to uh, samplers and uh, noise generators, uh, wavetable stuff, of course. And the newest addition to the system is a granular uh, engine, which you can load in a sample. And as you'll know, granular synthesis, you can take tiny little grains from different areas in that sample and make some fun noises. So let's just start with something there. We'll see if a, uh, an electric guitar sound uh, comes out of the synth sounding interesting. So that's playing four grains of electric guitar at a time. But if I bring the number of grains down, we can hear one at a time. And the start of the note there. <laughs> But the beauty of this system is you can do a bunch of uh, fun stuff with multiple grains happening at one time and moving things from, uh, thanks Perry, moving over the, <laughs> the real mouse to uh, help me to find the uh, quicker motion here. But um, now we're taking grains from different moments within that sample and spreading them around. 
And you can see how that could start to build up a texture quite easily. You can randomize the pan of those grains and so on and so on. But let's not get stuck on the granular system because I'll uh, forget to tell you about the other sections of the synth. So you start off with a waveform or a, a sound generator. At the bottom, you have modulators, which allow you to do stuff to that sound. So we start with a basic saw wave here. And if we wanted to uh, modulate the pitch of that simple saw sound, we could do it in as simple a way as to grab an LFO, click the little orange plus icon, uh, come up to the pitch option here, and now we've got a simple modulation of the pitch. Now, something a bit more practical that you might want to do is to modulate a filter cutoff. So we can load a filter into the generator section here between the wave and the output envelope here. And we can move the cutoff around the queue. We can start to oscillate the cutoff. And we're setting up a synth sound. We're having fun. We're doing sound design before we know it. And of course, all the controls of the LFO are right there for you. And that'll run in uh, free time or in sync with your door session. A uh, bunch more complexity you can uh, choose in there, but let's start simple. So we've got that sound. And then what we might want to do is add some effects to that audio over on the right hand side. So we can do things like distorting it. Or we could add some reverb. Or we could use a ring modulator, let's say. And any number of different things are possible. This is the modular design philosophy, the emergent design that I mentioned, where we have a bunch of little pieces that you can choose to put together in whatever way you like. Um, this is a great way to demonstrate that. We have a list of effects. All of the first three columns are actually available for free to anyone who goes to killerhearts.com and signs up for a, a free uh, account, or indeed through Plugin Boutique. Uh, you can get the first 30 or so effects for free, and they are available also to run in the DAW as standalone effects. So if I just close down Phase Plant for a second, I choose an audio track, and I can actually grab any of those and put them into the track as standalone plugins and uh, they just work as any other VST or AAX or AU plugin in your DAW of choice. Uh, but where it gets really good fun is when you start bringing them into the Kilohertz ecosystem and combining them and making them into more than the sum of their parts. So uh, within Faceplant, of course, you've got the opportunity to design your sounds, including sound generation sources and so on. We also have a couple of other uh, sound uh, systems or uh, host plugins, we call them. Uh, Snap Heap, which is a uh, effects rack that allows you to combine these effects in series or in parallel uh, and build your own processes. I often talk about this sort of guitar pedal board style thing. And oh, did I accidentally just open up the video hmm. game? <laughs> if you click this little icon, on the top, you can have fun playing video games, but that's for another stream. We'll come back to that another day. Anyhow, and uh, the other one here is Multipass, which is same concept, but it's in uh, multi band world. So you can split your frequencies and make different things happen to different parts of your spectrum. So you might want to treat your bass differently than your overtones and so Which on. Which is, a, yeah. again, that's a standalone plugin that you can have inside exactly, of one yeah. of the effects lanes inside of Phase Plant. It's so cool. Yeah, so Correct. sort of everything goes into each other. And uh, a lot of people will use Multipass without uh, Phase Plant, especially in, in stuff like uh, video or cinema. That's we, it. we hear a lot of uh, stories about uh, multipass and snappy in particular being used for sound effects for you know all sorts of things it's uh, yeah. it's very versatile this modular system yeah i mean even if it's as simple as you're working on a game you've got a, a weapon sound and you you have a sample or a collection of samples a layer of samples you want to add a little bit more weight to the bass but you you can just bring it into multipass do a bit of uh, compression on the bass leave the high overtones alone that kind of thing uh, There's a lot of versatility again, and it's up to you to design your own processes from the basic building blocks here. Yeah. We've got simple chorus effects, filters, delays, all the kind of the, the bread and butter things that you need to build almost any sound processor yeah. that you would it's like. It's very much like build your own plugin, yeah. and then you save that as a preset, and then you reuse it or you share it with your friends or whatever. That's it. So, yeah. 
And One that. of the, the 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 use cases with multipass that people like overlook is if you just pull up multipass empty and then you add uh, a sim simple dynamics plug into each lane. You got instantly got like one of the absolutely most capable um, uh, multi band multi band compressors in the <laughs> on the market or compressors I should say yeah uh, dynamics or compressors dynamics more if you want to do like these OTT style so just while Pear was talking I built a three band multi band compressor here and we've got um, <laughs> upwards uh, compression downwards compression we've got uh, all control over our frequency ranges you can even modulate these frequency cutoffs if you wanted to for exciting effects you can grab the actual cutoff of the frequency band and move it around in real time with the modulation system so there's, there's so much almost to, nothing you can't do. to really love about i i guess you call you call it the kilohertz ecosystem and it's the same yeah, in multi-pass and in phase plant where it can be incredibly comprehensive but everything the way it's laid out in the the sort of it's like a synth sandbox I use the sandbox from like the video game, but like, you know, the routing that you just showed there and how it just shows you that dotted line from one orange to another. And like, everything is mm. super simple and just clearly laid out. Like there's not a lot of guessing to be had. It's just so cool. I mean that it's just, it's yeah. so smooth and it's, you know, it looks great, but it's so informational. It's, is informational a word? But I, I, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, I love it. It's absolutely phenomenal. I think that's very much one of the touchstones of the design here. I don't want to speak for Pad, but he'll correct me if I'm wrong. It's about allowing people to find ways to achieve whatever it is they want to achieve and also to learn about sound design and the, the possibilities that their tools <clears throat> afford them at the same time. So whether you're a beginner or a dedicated pro with many years of experience, you can use Faceplant in a way that suits your workflow. You can build stuff that you perhaps can't find elsewhere, and you can really think about how the pieces are fitting together. It's uh, also possible, of course, to do some fun preset surfing, but uh, if you really want to dig into the sound design and uh, learn something, develop some new exciting uh, methods, you can do that in Faceplant. It's Absolutely. very versatile. And if you're a beginner to the Kilohertz ecosystem, you should definitely go for uh, the, the bundle called Kilohertz Essentials first, the free one with the, all the 30 effects. There are some real gems in there and they're all absolutely free, no, no cost whatsoever. So just it's a no-brainer for anyone to go get those. We have a, a really popular transient shaper. People love the trans gate. Um, a bunch of really, really useful stuff in there that you should uh, like use it because that's what it's there for. But as soon as you want to get into Faceplant or any of the other hosts, you know, start out experimenting from from like with simple building blocks you just use a few things at a time and and go from there don't be discouraged if you open up, up a big preset that came with the factory bank and it has a hundred modules and you don't understand what it does because that's not really the point of it you want to build your you want to build your understanding from a from a, like a blank canvas so when you add stuff you sort of you understand the things you're adding and then as you build a more and more complex preset you get a, a no, the knowledge of what it is and what, what it's meant to do just by being the creator of it and then after you have some experience or you've spent a few hours with it then you can start deconstructing other other people's uh, presets and a great way to start doing that is the tutorials folder in our factory bank like uh, george is showing us here it has uh, um, annotated presets that each one shows like a, a particular uh, concept that or a, 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 like a, a small design idea that you can use for building your own stuff. Later I'm on. excited to hear this one. Do you mind, Per? No, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so this is like a super simple example of how you can build an, an arpeggio with a modulation system. Mm. Cool. Hey, and by the way, everybody. We um, we do have the Kilohertz Essentials on Plugin Boutique. Killian's going to be throwing it's... a link into the chat, so go download them now. There's they're nothing absolutely to lose. Free. Is yeah, 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 yeah. No. And remember, I mean, it, they're they're just individual plugins that sound amazing. I you is the tape stop part of that bundle? I yeah, that is. Yep. Yeah, let's take a quick look at the tape stop. Yes, yeah, that's tape one of my favorites. Great. Right, the transient shape is also a great like. one. Transgate. And if I press play on this uh, sound here and then press stop on the tape stop, guess what happens? <laughs>
Nice. It does what it says it does. That's another thing that's uh, common in the design of these things. It's, it's very clear what they are, what they do. You shouldn't have to read the manual to figure out what you're up, about to hear. So, yeah, you just get a bit of fun. And uh, lovely slow tape stop effects, if you want. Yeah, and that's like the, cool, like the, the most complicated thing about that one was actually getting the um, speed up again once right. you stop and doing that in real time because that's a little bit of magic in there. Well, well you guys, I mean, it is, <laughs> like, it is magical because I remember doing a tutorial on the tape stop effect, I think in like house music or something, and I had yeah. a bunch of different tape stop plugins and I ended up using yours because it it just functions so well with the the automation inside of the DAW so hmm. whatever the magic is it's not is, magic though it's just a little bit of time travel there's nothing too complicated <laughs> about it if you know what you're doing no right these guys have been working on it it's it's solved don't well, worry you'd be surprised how many people tell us that they enjoy the simplicity of of these small building blocks uh, i mean people like go for our delay or something even a, it, like they prefer it to really expensive delay units with lots of like built-in features and stuff because most of the time you don't need all that extra craft sort of you or, or or extra features you you need a delay and it's solid and it does exactly what it says and that's what you want 90% of the time then 10% of the time you want something else and maybe you go for a competitor's delay with which has another set of features or you'd like build the features yourself in Snapheap mm. and then you save that for later for the few times you do want it. Yeah. Yeah, love that, love that. It's really the way to go. I'll just show you very quickly, uh, Joshua and folks at home, exactly what Per says. In Snapheap, you end up with a user folder full of interesting little ideas that you just, you needed something and you made it and you saved it. And you know, so I was building a little DSO with some stuff. I just needed to do some detection and uh, then pass that signal over to Multipass, for example. and um, you know, we were talking about distortions and, and warmth and stuff. So here's a little thing where some EQ in some, some distortion and some EQ on the way out, just little pieces that you can then save and load in later. And so I could have that warm distortion in uh, phase plant on my synth patch and then add some more effects after or some more effects before or another complex snappy preset mm -hmm. in the chain there. You know, there's... Uh, it's very no, much like no building limits, with Legos. Really. It's just yeah. the simple building blocks, and then you build something amazing out of it. Yeah. Well, I, I've got a bunch of questions here. Perhaps this is a good moment to right. field some of those. Sure. Okay. We're ready. You're ready. <laughs> Let's do it. Vic99 is wondering, are there any limitations to how many effects and or oscillators you can add inside a phase plant? Good uh, I'll, answer, I'll answer that. Yes, there are. Okay. Uh, so for the effects, there is no limit. Wow. Uh, but for the for the generator stack, you're limited to 32 modules, and that includes groups. So a, a, a like an empty group co counts as one. And then for modulators, it, their limit is 64, I think. This is this sounds arbitrary, and it's because it is. Um, but uh, we're we're planning on getting rid of these limitations in the future. Uh, no promises on on when though, but they will go away. But for most practical purposes, you're you're fine. I mean, people hit the limits sometimes, but it's mostly because uh, they they're do trying. something like the yeah. yeah, either they're trying or they're doing something like what you were showing us before with like a sequence where they're trying to make a whole song from just hitting one note. And I mean, that's a fun project to have, but it's not necessarily something we absolutely feel like we have to accommodate in a in a perfect way because it's you know it's cool that you can do it but it's not sort of the meaning of an instrument uh, yeah yeah i think i mean there there's a limit and it's just like yeah. being reasonable <laughs> and or your yeah. cpu yeah but like i said we're working to get rid of the limitations because let them have are, it yeah 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 sure. <laughs> that that's been our, our philosophy and it sort of it sort of hurt us a little bit because we put some really cpu heavy presets in our factory content and then, like a couple of years down the road, we realized, hey, that's not a great experience for a lot of newcomers. Maybe they select, uh, they're like one of the worst offenders. It's a, it's a, it's a preset called uh, Blue Messiah, and people love it because it sounds great, but it's 
so CPU hungry, so it will oftentimes like lag and cause. Let's see if we can run it while yeah, we're yeah. also live streaming. Right, right. Let's see. Let's see if anything catches on fire. Well, that works pretty pretty well. I mean, it's not unreasonable to play it, but but. We've been also, doing some optimization, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have, and it also, but it also has uh, eight uh, polyphony of eight, so you yeah. can play like a big chord at once, and that's going to be problematic, I think. Yeah, well, this is good laptop, I guess. Yeah, let's not let's not let's not test it too much more. I mean, it sounds no, amazing, right. though. I mean, that's undeniable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, Rob Swire. He did a bunch of stuff. Uh, oh, that was another really Rob Swire happy. patch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love mm -hmm. that. Mr. Dirty Harry is wondering how many presets come with the baseline model? I think somewhere around eight or 900. Mm. What? what? Roughly. Excuse me? What did you say? I think you... <laughs> I, I, no, wait. Yeah, like six... Six, uh, at least 600 i know it's over above 600 um uh, a lot a lot a lot yeah yeah and uh and then um oh there's a lot of pads 90 yeah yeah, yeah and, but <laughs> uh so hush for everyone hearing this but here's a secret we're working on um a cool thing where the number of available presets and content in general in faceplant is gonna multiply by a lot Ooh, you heard it here first. Yeah. You heard yeah. it here first. Here we go. Plugin Boutique exclusive. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, Wonderful. we got another question from James Quackenbush, and is does Faceplant use iLock? Um, no, it doesn't. Not if you buy it from Plugin Boutique. No, um, hmm. we have other partnerships that uh, use iLock, but uh, no, is the answer. Awesome. Uh, actually, no. Faceplant specifically, we don't have that for. So, no, Faceplant doesn't use iLock. Copy that. Good to know. Thank you. Again, major, major issue is ease of use. We want people to be able to yeah. get to grips with the thing and get going quickly. We don't want to have barriers in the way as far as possible. You know? Yeah, yeah. So It's even, very simple to get started with it. It, it is. Even down to like installation, you don't mm -hmm. have to copy or paste any license keys you don't basically you don't even know you have to know that you have them or anything it's very automated and you know download your personalized installer and run it and you should be good to go all right just a kumquat's wondering how long did it take to program this such an intuitive synth <laughs> it took a while um Kilohertz was founded in like 2011 or something, I think. We started working on this specific ecosystem that we're seeing the end results of in maybe 2012. And we worked for five years or so until we released the first parts of it, which were multi-pass and like maybe 15 of the effects or something. That was our first release. And then after that, we released more and more effects and Snap Heap. And then eventually in 2019, we released like the crowning achievement, which was uh, Faceplant. Doesn't, it doesn't, and, um, doesn't happen overnight is what you're saying. No, no. And then we, um, and then we've been work like we've been hard at work ever since. So we released version two, like a year and a half later with the updated modulation system, which is what you're seeing now. And then like, this spring, we released the granular engine to it, and we're like we're planning on adding features for as long as we absolutely can. And so, feature updates are always free with Kilohertz. So, if you buy Faceplant now, you're sure to get every new version as it becomes available. Awesome. Um, you'll have to manually uh, update it, but you'll get a little notification up here in the left-hand corner uh, if there's an update available. There's a little red dot over here next to the version number, so you can find that in your installer. So yeah, all Kilohertz plugins come with uh, lifetime updates. That's um, that's awesome. It's only it's only we only charge for any new products that we might add add to the lineup. Okay, um, mm -hmm. diplomatic. Any good answer to that oh. question? Sorry to interrupt again, Josh, uh, uh. Joshua. But the um, <laughs> any good answer to that question ends with and counting. You know, yeah. it's many years and counting because mm -hmm. 
this is not a project that we started and finished and mm. now it's out and we're done with it. We are continuing to add interesting things. I think just today we um, put a little feature into the um, uh, beta that hadn't been there before. And yeah. it's very exciting to see things developing and getting better and more exciting, more interesting, more easy mm. to work with all the time. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, more questions are coming in. Listen, we got a bunch more questions, but I think George, if you don't mind, maybe give us a little bit more of a taste of some of those incredible presets. Of course. And then continue. Sure. On. We were just uh, playing with one earlier on that we thought was a really good uh, 2001 thing, um, just to show off uh, not only the sort of sonic range of uh, Faceplant, but also if you have a, an MPE controller or a keyboard that has. Uh, pressure sensitivity or, or things like that. There are ways to uh, influence the sound after the key is pressed, which is always a tricky thing with synths. So this one has a nice mellow sound. And then when you press deeper into the keys, it gets stronger. All of that kind of thing. Okay, um, so th that actually answers an earlier question. I apologies for who asked it. I don't see its way up in the uh, list here. But someone was wondering if Faceplant is MPE compatible. So you're saying it is, yeah? Yeah, it is. And not only that, it is um, it is uh, well liked by MPE controller creators such as Expressive E, who makes the Osmos here that we are so happy to have a. Um, uh, a copy of um, and uh, yeah they're good f friends of ours and they they really really enjoy faceplant for its MPE comp uh, for its MPE implementation let's take a look for example at what a preset from a, um, uh, a content bank by Venus theory called interdimensional which uh, uses the MPE timbre modulator which in this case is um, uh, akin to an aftertouch So as I press deeper into the key, you get all sorts of different textures coming into the. Yeah, and there. if you can, if you notice the little small blue ball bouncing around here, ah, here mm -hmm. it's like it's like following the value. Uh, but if I press multiple keys, I, it's going to be tricky for you guys to see. But if I, I can have that. There's a blue ball, and then there are other little gray ones next to it, and that signif that uh, shows you the the value for all the different voices. So it's a pair. of per note value that goes up and down like mm -hmm. continuously. And a really, really cool thing about that is uh, if you hit this poly button on the, like all the effects, you would sort of envision them as mostly like um, uh, post-processing stuff, right? Mm, just audio but, effects. Yeah, audio but... effects. But if you hit the poly button on a, on a lane, all of the effects in that one lane become uh, polyphonous, so they apply to each note individually. What? So for instance, something like a distortion unit will not distort your whole chord and like distort it out of proportion, but it will distort each note individually so you don't get like, yeah, destroy your speakers and stuff. Mm. So if I demoed that by playing one low note and one high note at the same time, I might be able to give you more of the high note coming through and more of the low note coming through. It's not set up to show that in this particular preset, but the, the bit crush, for example, comes through more on whichever note is coming through yeah. stronger, and uh, they each have different values assigned to uh, to their individual voices. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, um, that was actually a, another question that happened earlier. Uh, so we're just yeah, we're just cool. knocking these questions out of the park. This is yeah, and this is this like the po the polyphony thing uh, is that's. That's a great feature. I mean, that is not something that ever synth has. No. Absolutely not. Mm. No. Very few, I think I would it's say. particularly good if I just take 30 seconds to build a patch from scratch here, right? It's really fun for um, polyphonous patches or polyphonic patches where you need a, a filter per note, for example. So let's just take the basic filter here, make it polyphonic. We're going to put an envelope into the modulators section here. And now, instead of the behavior you might expect in a regular synth, where um, if I turn off polyphony for the effect there, I'll play a chord and all of the notes get um, uh, filtered equally. If I now put that polyphony on, we can play. And you hear that those lower notes are coming through 
without the, uh, I'm sorry, I'm clipping on my master a little bit there, but um, those lower notes are not being uh, cut off at the new rate when a new note is played. So that new cut off only is affecting the new voice that we're starting to play there. So I'll stop clipping my bus now. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> no, that's absolutely yeah, it's a really cool, cool little toy that. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, I just want to say thanks to everybody for All joining us. Oh, if I could just... <laughs> thanks, everybody, for joining us. If you're coming in late, we're here with Killer Hearts, checking out primarily Faceplant, but the entire Killer Hearts ecosystem. We're going to be doing some giveaways. They've got a, a bunch of free plugins. Killian, throw another link to that bundle in the chat. But uh, to be entered to win some of these great gifts. And by the way, let me just let everybody know what these giveaways are going to be. To make people get excited here. We got four winners today, and we're going to be giving away thanks to Killer Hearts, by the way. Shout out Killer Hearts. Let's get likes and hearts and whatever in the chat for them allowing us to do this today. But we're going to be giving away a copy of Snap Heap, a copy of Multipass, a copy of Phase Plant, and one lucky person is going to walk away with the Killer Hearts Ultimate Bundle. Pear, what's in what's in that ultimate bundle? That sounds pretty epic. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's all the three hosts that we just mentioned, uh, and it includes all of the rest of our uh, sort of premium effects, like that we call them. So what what George is highlighting here, it's uh, two sets. Uh, it's two like big EQs called Carve uh, EQ and Slice EQ. Uh, here we go. They work again like their own plugins, but they also work as modular components of the ecosystem. So this one is the parametric um, EQ that people might be uh, familiar with the concept. Uh, and then the other one is a graphic EQ with some really in cool and intuitive uh, ways of editing uh, the bands of it. And yeah. then it, we have yeah, it also has a cool uh, match. Uh, <laughs> it has a pretty cool uh, feature, actually. That uh, that. Um, that's my favorite. That's your favorite, right? So, <laughs> so we've uh, we've implemented this like matching the EQ of, or rather, we we've recorded the EQ profile of uh, other songs, and you can record your own EQ profiles from like finished and mastered tracks that you like and then you can apply it to your own tracks and this is surprisingly useful uh, but yeah it's a it's a cool feature well um i'm oh, sorry was you gonna were you gonna say something i'm just i'm about to say how incredible this is but if, if, they've, if they've got more to say by all means no no uh so so those are both included and then uh, we have on top of that we have uh our first two effects uh, ever, Disperser and Faturator, these were sort of conceived before the ecosystem was invented. So they look, uh, they when, when you run them standalone, they have sort of a pretty different um, appearance. Um, but it's a, uh, so Faturator is a cool saturation, dynamics preserving uh, uh, saturation unit. And Disperser, like we're showing here, is a weird kind of plugin that's, one of our most well known i would say it's a it's a it's a series of all pass filters so an all pass filter will let all the sound through unchanged but it will still have the uh, face issues if you will of a normal filter so around the cutoff face the face of individual frequencies is going to be slightly uh, changed and this uh, plugin sort of abuses that weird you know, weird feature of an all-pass filter uh, into great effect where it kind of smears your transients in a weird way. So things start sounding a little lasery. So like a, a kick drum will have like a, a weird like tail to it. And it's um, it's a, it's a, like a fan favorite and some people swear by it and use it on absolutely everything. And uh, it's, a, it's, a unique, uh, it's a unique enough effect in a world of very many similar effects that you can you, you we can actually start telling like on the radio when people use dispersor oh, wow. because there there aren't many other uh, plugins that do the same thing so that's that's fun that's something you can you don't know for sure but you know you wonder is this dispersor <laughs> I think this might be the dispersor so. well, I, think, I just um, wanted to oh you want to show see us if something? I could show that quickly just mm -hmm. that so here's a kick drum sample. 
And if I throw disperser in there, it will sound instantly cooler. Yeah. It's quite low, Joy. I don't know if you can... Um, Gain-wise, I can give you a nice, easy gain boost. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Anyhow, that's that. <laughs> a lot of fun to be had. So yeah, lots of winners today. Four winners, yep. four lucky people. Going to be walking away with some incredible Killer Hearts gear. All you need to do is be active in the chat to win. Be positive there. Be nice. Say cool things and ask great questions, and you'll be entered to win. And we'll announce those winners at the end of the the stream. But George, please, I I keep interrupting you. Give us some more <laughs> taste of some of these incredible patches. No the worries. There's so much to talk about, isn't there? Um. And uh, we're loving the questions and all the usernames. So thank you. Great. Um, <laughs> here's another of these uh, MPE patches. Anything with the uh, tag expressive uh, in the bank there has uh, some MPE involvement. So this is a string patch that has some capability in that regard. Um, we have... I think maybe now's a good time to talk about the additional content banks that are available. We have a sort of system in here whereby all of these factory presets obviously are totally wonderful, but we also commission collections from uh, known sound designers and artists to uh, expand the uh, horizons of the users. So, for example, just yesterday we released this one, Cirrus by Aravain, a renowned ambient uh, and uh, atmospheric music maker and sound designer. Uh, so this is a, a little thing that you can pick up and it's uh, got a bunch of extra sounds in it to uh, tickle your fancy. So um, let's just pick one at random, plucked synth sound. Um, so again, there's just no end to the uh, number and, and range of sounds that you can get inspired by from Faceplant. Uh, we've got uh, that one there from Andrew Huang. We've got a bunch from uh, New Loops and uh, uh, a bunch of different producers. So it's wonderful. And my favorite game in Faceplant is to build my user bank and add lots more fun things to here. And uh, I've been making videos for uh, Killer Hearts for a long time now and made sure to save all those little sounds I've put together, uh, little presets and collections of uh, fun noises. So uh, here's one, for example, which is based on a sample of me saying big news friends at the start of a video, and I made a kick drum out of it. <laughs> that's not the kick drum, though. What is it? Oh, that's the bass. Sorry. <laughs> that's me saying friends, friends. Um, and uh, we've got a kick coming out of that as well from my b b big, etc., etc. So building a, a collection of your own sounds, uh, getting a few sounds by uh, top-notch sound designers from around the world, uh, you can really start to build an inspiring uh, environment for yourself in Faceplant, I think. Yeah. That's, uh, that's one of my favorite things to do, is to build these collections and uh, enjoy getting inspired by hearing what people do, looking at the way they build their sounds. Yeah. If there I can was... just mention... Oh. Sorry, <laughs> there was a question about the sound banks, and someone's wondering how if if well, first of all, if you accept people making sound banks, and how someone might get a sound bank mm. to you, or are you pretty much just approaching sound designers? That there's a couple you... of different things to say about that. Actually, okay. there's um, there's a couple of different approaches we take. So generally speaking, we uh, approach and commission banks from our favorite sound designers and from people we've. Um, wanted to work with but obviously people who uh we don't know about are out there in the world as well and we love to get emails uh, uh to info at killerhearts.com or whatever from people who are interested in building a relationship but um besides the banks that we commission and put out ourselves uh, we also know there's a, a lively community of uh, third-party sound creators and uh, uh, sound designers who are able to release their own and we fully support and endorse that. It's a great thing that people do. Uh, we even have in our FAQ on the website a bank maker tool, which is a, a just a little program we put together which allows people to package up the presets in the same way as we do for our own 
uh, oh, content banks and nice. add their own artwork to the top and so on to make it kind of uh, fit the uh, the mold and look just as good and, and fit just as well uh, yeah. as anything else. Yeah, and these are available on um, a lot of these sound designers will um, self-publish and like sell these uh, banks on their own. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so that's a great way of doing it. And I want to mention that uh, the pre like the content banks in 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 our system does not only That's right. contain presets; they can contain samples like that. They would have like like some of them here. Like Impossible has a bunch of samples in it. Uh, they can contain wavetables. So if you open the wavetable browser, you'll find the factory stuff like all these. Hundreds and hundreds of cool wavetables, but you also you'll also find the ones that uh, Must Die published in his Crisis Design um, preset bank. So these are mostly stuff that he used in the presets for that bank, but there might be like extras. Um, same goes for like LFO shapes um, and any kind of content. We even I don't know if uh, if maybe everyone hasn't seen this, but there's like an an LFO module, but it reuses wavetable data. So you can have an LFO that, where you can scroll through uh, the wavetable frames to like morph your That's LFO awesome. shape over time. Yeah. And again, over here, you can load all the cool wavetables from the factory stuff or the banks or stuff you make your own. We have um, a really, really competent wavetable editor built into, into the synthesis, <laughs> synthesizer where you can create your own wavetables from scratch. I mean, that, that even the browser, even down to the wavetable browser, it's yeah. amazing. I mean, just hats off. Uh, everybody, hearts yeah, in the chat, yeah. hearts in the chat. Yes. Give us yes, some likes. <laughs> just you wait he says oh. this stuff all the time I, 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 I've got to say working here is a real ride because these guys they just sort of pop up after lunch and go oh I've got this cool thing I'm working on should we put it out next week oh yeah okay cool it's exciting and then it obviously it never quite comes out next week but it, it, there's ideas and fun things coming up aplenty and they're such teases even with me it's for, great for people who might not know is saying it's coming out next week and having it not come out next week is a hundred percent the norm across the business yeah absolutely <laughs> but that's great man we Keep try not your toes. to communicate publicly that we're going to release something until we're pretty sure we <laughs> yeah, are yeah. but uh <laughs> well keep you on your toes george you know what i mean keep, absolutely it's yeah. job security 100 percent um, yeah, just you wait. <laughs> <laughs> we need a t-shirt. We need the Killer Hearts t-shirt. By the way, I got uh, a Killer Hearts t-shirt. It was a two oh, NAMs yeah. ago, like one of the retro mm -hmm. ones. So even your merch mm -hmm. is absolutely fantastic, I have to say. <laughs> uh, was there Did anything else? Did you try else? the energy drink? Say it again. Did you try the energy drink? No. Can you mail me it, no. please? Or is that, is that, can <laughs> you not mail that? You said, no. Yeah, yeah, you can't mail that across state lines. Yeah, you? we have the the, the face plant <laughs> energy drink at, at shows, and it's terrible, but we love it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than that. Uh, yeah. Let me just do a couple more questions, and mm -hmm. let me slide this over here. If you could just do a quick top level, what's the difference between snap heat and multi pass for a big bite beats? Is wondering. Um, Big Byte Beats is the username there, right? Correct. That's not a, a genre that I need to know all about. No, well, good. It could okay. be both. Let's be honest. I Maybe. Yeah. Okay, let's just start in our DAW, a simple uh, thing. The um, uh, This is Ableton, obviously, but it doesn't have to be Ableton. There's all kinds of different DAWs available, and this works in all of them, right? But yeah. if I drag in a simple drum beat that we will listen to slightly... Oh, that's on a MIDI channel. Sorry. I totally know what I'm doing. Um, let's put that in there. We'll loop it. <laughs> I've already got Faturator and Disperser on there. That's fun. <laughs> so um, if we're working with audio, maybe we're a mix engineer and we want to make our drum beat sound that much cooler. Um, obviously, we go to our plugin folders. And as well as those individual effects plugins we talked about, um, what we love to do so much at Killer Hearts is give you the means to combine your effects and create new ones. So Snap Heap is the, the first one I would show you to, to get that concept across. This is a multi-effects 
rack where you have seven lanes which can each have multiple effects in them. They can run in series from left to right or if you click these buttons you can set up parallel lanes. So now one and one B are running in parallel and then straight into two and three and four. Um, so with that you could for example uh, set up a um, uh, an EQ followed by a compressor. Let's just take some of the low end out of those drums and let's add a compressor, uh, do some really heavy compression on that. So now we've got an effects process and if we wanted to uh, put the compressor before the EQ, we just drag and drop it. Uh, we can move that over there so we can see things a bit clearer. We can fold those up if we're happy with them. We're done with them for now. They still make their sounds, but we can uh, leave them there nice and tidy. So now we could add some distortion or some uh, phasing or some anything else that we wanted. Our old friend tape stop. And we can build a complex effects processor um, in SnapHeap that we would need to build a chain of multiple plugins uh, otherwise to make. Uh, and the great thing about it is it's all in one window. You don't have to keep opening and closing different plugins. You don't need to navigate your DAWs um, routing system so much. You can just set things up. And when you're happy with the sound, you can give it a name, you can give it a description, save it as a preset, and it's there for you when you come back. Um, Multipass is the same kind of a concept, but it is splitting the frequency spectrum into different bands. So, for example, we can listen to the low end on its own and add some effects to that. Uh, maybe we want to compress the kick drum but not affect the cymbals too much, so we would just do that. Um, and we can move the cutoffs around and just check out what's going on in the mid-range and, oh, that definitely needs some distortion, I think, so we'll add a bit there, uh, and so on and so on. So that way we can start to affect our different frequency bands separately. We'll always add some lovely shiny reverb to the hi-hats. And you can enable those, the disabled bands here, so you can have up to five exactly, bands yeah. at a time. And you can even, if you're like, when you're getting familiar with the concept, you can even nest these. So in multipass, mm. you can add another multipass inside of it. That's it. Yeah. Or like I say, if you've saved your preset in SnapHeap, you can load that up with that complex processor you just built. Let's see if I've got one at home. Uh, yeah, I had this one for a sound design snap video a while ago. But So there's a, a sound that I've made months ago and I've saved it and now I've just dragged it into my multipass situation here just to affect my high frequencies, for example. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, it's, as Joshua said, a sort of sandbox to, uh, to help us build a, uh, a world of sound that is unique to us and to allow us to experiment with different types of things yeah. and uh, get a lot of deep control over our sounds. Uh, whether we're generating them from scratch in Faceplant or we're working with recorded material, um, uh, we're working on games and, and film soundtracks or we're making hip-hop beats or we're recording an orchestra or, you know, there's nothing that this isn't helpful for because you're taking control over the individual pieces <coughs> of uh, the sound design uh, toolbox and you're using them to your advantage, whatever you might need is yeah. there for you. And yeah. when I'm at a family gathering and my mm -hmm. aunt is asking what <laughs> Snap Heap is, I, my two second explanation is it's a, it's a, it's a pedal board. Uh, yeah. There you go. And, uh, and that, that's pretty much what they want to hear. <laughs> and then, yeah. okay, so good. <laughs> yeah, and it really can be that, you know, if you wanted to put your guitar effects into software, you might um, start by looking at your pedal board and say, oh, that pedal does uh, overdrive, and that pedal there is my chorus, and that there is my compressor. And all of those little pieces that you would combine with cables in your um, uh, hard case lid and forget the batteries for and the power supply and whatever, you can just have that all in here. So you can stick a chorus in there, you can stick a compressor in there. And the great thing with this is you never run out of space because you can scroll down and add more things down below and you can uh, forget worrying about the power supply, like I say, because yeah. you always have what you need. Sure. But um, it's easy to forget that this uh, these plugins also have the full modular modulation system, which yeah. makes them extremely capable. So without even adding a single effect, just by modulating like the output gain, yeah, you can get very with with say an LFO table or something, you mm. can build some pretty crazy. Uh, crazy things where you can like draw your own shapes and morph them and stuff and you can get something like um, oh, yeah it's like really really crazy effects that you would otherwise have very specialized plugins do 
Yeah, so um, just on that drum loop again, I'm now modulating the gain simply on the beat, so... Yeah, creating like a rudimentary... Um, what have you, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then um, on top of that, you can like name all your macros. So when you hook up macro controls to whatever you want to control, you name them, and, and when you do, those names are visible uh, for automation in your DAW, or if you use this inside of another kilohertz uh, plugin, then those uh, macros like become exposed in that smaller version of the UI that we saw a second ago. Maybe you can show that again. Yeah, of course. Um, inside yeah. here, maybe, because I don't think... Oh, sure, that, sure, right? that's right. So if you add another snap heap, and you just, from this view, you load a preset immediately, you can... Oh, sorry, yeah, of course. <clears throat> yeah. Just from here. So the preset browser is available even in the smaller sort of UI. So here you go. This is all you probably need to know about this preset is what the preset designer uh, created those six macros for and named them. So. If you don't like really want to get into the nitty gritty of how it was, how this effect was made, you can just use these macros, which is probably what the creator intended. Yeah. So we've got delay mix, for example, that'll give us some echoey stuff. But if I just wanted to turn that down, much less delay mix, much less reverb, yeah. phaser, something. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, yeah. <laughs> so. It's I as tell you simple what, or as complex as you want it to be, right? Mm -hmm. I hope the other people watching, uh, <laughs> everybody, let me know if you're just as blown away as I am about it. I always get <laughs> so impressed with, I mean, it's so robust that when you open a preset, that's just, it's essentially snap heapception. You could just go down yeah, and mm -hmm. down into layers and who knows how far the rabbit hole goes. And I'm yeah. always just blown away by that. But then I'm like, wait a minute people made this possible like it, it hurts the mind it boggles the mind well done it's absolutely phenomenal uh i can't say thank it you. enough <laughs> thank you a few more questions yeah, here if you want to get into it yeah yeah i think so of course um how many people are working at the kilohertz company that's from ls the name uh, right now we're like nine and a half or something, <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. But, uh, we were like the three, uh, founders were, um, we were working, uh, by ourselves for a long time. Um, Kilars didn't make any money before we launched Faceplant basically. So we were working the time we had in between like doing consultancy work for other companies to just to make ends meet but um after faceplant launched four years ago we've grown a lot so I, yeah uh nine uh nine or ten depending on how you count right now all right and w is there a particular favorite effect within the kilohertz team and that's from connor connor is wondering that the correct answer to that question is bit crush. Always bit crush. There's no, everyone else is wrong because it sounds really groovy oh, and crumbly and crispy. No, I, I'm sure everyone has a different idea. Uh, some of the developers will have their favorites based on which gave them the least headaches to develop. But, uh, Per, what is your favorite? Uh, so my favorite module, I couldn't say. Uh, but my favorite preset that I ever heard in, in the effects category was we like just when we launched Multipass, we uh, we ran a small competition where we gave people a, a like a, a sample, m much like the drum beat you just played. Mm -hmm. And the competition was create a Multipass preset that turns this loop into something as completely different as possible, and then save the preset and send it to us, and we'll play it on that same sample and we'll like judge it and my god that was that was a while ago and they only had multipass they didn't have snap people or they and they had like the the worst modulation system that we used before and they only had like 15 of the of the effects modules but the results of that were like mind blowing we should do that again actually mm. that kind of that competition was so crazy it I'm so blown away how people would turn something that sounded like much like the drumbeat you were playing before into mm. something that sounded like an orchestrated samba ensemble <laughs> or like yeah, yeah. And, and just with effects and like with time shifting stuff and oh, it was so so good the results from that. 
Do we still have any of no, those in the collection? No, I don't know. I think I could probably find them, but it would take I'm going to choose the Bit Crusher yeah. collection just quickly and hear this one then, <laughs> just while we're on it. I'll turn the processing off and then on, and we'll all find out how great Bit Crush is. Ready? Yeah, that's the stuff. I mean, that was there pretty pretty much what I thought was going to That was, I mean, yeah. well done. Well beautiful, done. beautiful stuff. <laughs> Uh, so listen, I think we're pretty much wrapping up here. Was there anything else specifically that you wanted to showcase for the community that's watching right now? Uh, One thing that I think I really wanted to just make sure everyone's aware of is how quick and easy it is to get into the Killer Hearts system. Like I say, we have 30 or more, 33, 34 of our plugins are available for free. So uh, go over to Plugin Boutique, come over to our website, go just get started because you've really got nothing to lose. We're... Um, not going to um, uh, give you anything that isn't cool and useful. Yeah. Um, but and then, then also, yeah. If and then if, when when you have that, consider getting Snap Heap. It's only twenty nine bucks, and I think I hope we showcase like the insane potential mm -hmm. that that plugin has. It it is very much like build your own plugin, mm -hmm. uh, and it is so so powerful for twenty. Nine bucks, it's just the biggest steal, I think. Uh, <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And we also have um, uh, upgrade paths to our complete um, collection, which is called Ultimate Collection, mm -hmm. uh, including Phase Plant, including Multipass, and all of the effects, even the uh, premium ones, the EQs, the, the Faturator and Disperser and yeah. Convolver. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no complicated system whereby if you have this for a year and you you know upgrade to version two you might be eligible for it. no it's just like this very simple setup mm. um get the free stuff enjoy it and then get the rest of it that's yeah. basically what i would say yeah the 100%. only major feature that i feel we skipped over is uh the fm uh, features and mm -hmm. i don't we really think we need to get into it right now but faceplant is one of the the most capable FM synthesis engines on the market. You can do really crazy stuff where you can FM any type of generator with any any other type of generator. So you can like FM your samples with another sample or stuff like that. It's Let's really, just really do cool. very, very basic demo of that. If you have a sine wave, you can use the second sine wave at audio rate to modulate that sine wave. So, And of course, like Per said, you can take the first one to modulate the second one at the same time and then you're getting into really crunchy territory and uh, you could bring in a sample of a, um, a voice to uh, add more to that or yeah. let's just you know to throw in a waterfall and there's you know the, nothing that you can't mess around with there so um, all kinds of fun to be had yeah that's a, that's a super short version of it but yeah, <laughs> even and even the, if the you, end of it is that flutophone yeah. sound that we heard. A at lot the of people you know? who are into synthesis uh, get faceplant just for the generator section, actually, and mm -hmm. like never touch the other stuff right. <laughs> because it's very competent in in that regard. All right, well, fantastic. I think what I'd like to do, since we're going to be wrapping up here, is mm -hmm. give everybody watching uh, one last opportunity to be entered into the giveaway. As I said, we're going to have four winners today of some incredible Killer Hearts products, including the bundle that you just mentioned. So we're gonna be giving away a copy of Snap Heap, Multipass, Phase Plant, and then one lucky person is gonna win the Killer Hearts Ultimate Bundle, all of which are available in Plugin Boutique. Phase Plant's on uh, sale right now, 46% off on the site, so go check it out. I think you know why this is an absolutely insane synthesizer. Uh, but while I'm giving people the opportunity to be active in the chat to be entered to win, George, can you just run through maybe 10 more of these presets? I think I, I really want to end this Absolutely. on just like hearing some of the, just the versatility of this incredible synth. I think it's a good way to end it. Excellent. Sure. Yeah. Well, so I have a, a kind of a key sound here. Um, we've got uh, some fun mallets here. Let's try this one out. And don't forget to try the mod wheel. Uh, we've got uh, some effects, risers and so on. All 
very tweakable with the macros at the top, of course, and synced to your session. Um, we've got, uh, let's take a little look in drums here because it can be very fun to design some drum sounds. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and then um, my favorite place to go is the sequences where we can have full songs in one setup. So we've got... Yes. Like in the first week of Faceplant, uh, uh, like a 13-year-old guy tweeted us where he used the, the trial uh, to make the entire Game of Thrones intro song <laughs> uh, on, with one key. And it, he said that he'd mo his mother had promised him to buy Faceplant if he got a thousand likes. And I think he did actually. <laughs> I would hope so. What? You need yeah. to. Let's get that going again. That's. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is all just one key press. And again, we're not saying this is the way to use the synth necessarily. It's just a way you can use the synth. Um, I love that, but yes, that's that's how you should use the synth. That sounded amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just one more of these for fun. Uh, let's see. Um, future bass sequence one fifty. Let's have one fifty. Yeah, let's let's go full out for that. Oh, hold on. You got to find the right uh, key range as well, including tape stop there, of course. Wait, 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 wait. But is it is that an like an aftertouch? It's as you release your key that it happens. No, it's all programmed with it's the LFO. Programmed into the patch, so that's happening in sync with your tempo, according to this LFO here, so it's stopping the tape stop. Oh my gosh. As you see. <laughs> a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, cool, any other favorites of yours, Pat, that we No, should... I just wanted to mention that uh, a lot of people don't actually only use Faceplant for musical creation, but um, for FX as well. And I, I think we already said we have a lot of customers in the game audio industry where they synthesize various uh, sounds for use as um, effects in the, in the games. And this is a, really a growing market for us as, as people are beginning to understand the vast sound design capabilities of the system. Um, so I was just going to say that the FX category has some cool stuff in it as well. Mm. Let's go to that right after I've played this dash glitch patch because I'm excited now. Um, this is uh, quantized wavetables generating a melody. Yo, that's just off of Sandstorm. I, uh, that's giving me Sandstorm vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, in the FX uh, section here we got, yeah, just a bunch of interesting noises. This one I like. Come off it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all again programmed in yeah no samples what happened there at the <laughs> end what happened <laughs> it's the dial-up sound you remember from the 90s it's the whole thing but we can't listen to it because it's so long <laughs> yeah. it, it was like something might happen yeah. to my internet yeah yeah <laughs> let's try chemical bomb <laughs> and as i release there's a little pick up there mm -hmm. Let's try with the mod wheel up. And there's an add weirdness yeah, let's macro do that. here, which we must try. <laughs> oh, that's like space yeah, that space was, lasers. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that, that, I mean, it does what it says. Yep. Very nice. So... You know, I mean, it's just could, a great way to waste a weekend, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we could say, I mean, you said 900 presets and they're... <laughs> Sorry to cut you off, Joshua. <laughs> no, it worth it. it 100% worth it. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, like, just even the few random selections we've had here have been truly amazing. And I don't know if, again, it's one of my favorite since it's been so since it came out. Uh, it's been quite a while. 
Yeah. Um, it's just so, as you said, so versatile. If you can do the Game of Thrones intro on with one key press to get your mom to buy you the synth, then you should do that. I think, you know what you should do is if, if people can do that, it's just, uh, you know, give them a 50% off. Give You know what, let's give them 46% off. If you can give, yeah. if you can do the Game of Thrones intro on one key press and the demo version of Phase Plan, I will give you 46% off the the synth for however long it's on promo right now on Plug and Boutique. But I Superb. think that's fair. One more, just for fun. Yeah. This is what, what that's huh? the sound from like Pac-Man, right? When you, when something happens, like when you fall Yeah, I think it's la- like lower down in the register, like yeah. uh, No, not quite. Oh, I've changed that, hold on. No, no there way. we are. No, that, that's like when you die in Mario. I think the original Mario. Yeah, Am I wrong? I can't I remember. I can't place it really. But the first, <laughs> the first sound you play before you change any of it, I think ah. is uh, is sort of it's meant to emulate some uh, classic game, which I can't think of right now. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, we're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it. <laughs> okay. Um, I, right. I must stop eventually. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> no, fantastic. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on and giving us the run through and giving us a really comprehensive, I would say, look at not only Phase Plant, but the entire Kilohertz ecosystem. Uh, remember, everybody who's watching, go check out that free bundle. It's on Plugin Boutique. We've put links uh, throughout the chat. We'll put them in the description after as well. It's a great place to get started. And I think once you get in and try those out, you're gonna wanna you're gonna want those bigger, better, more complex uh, toys. Phase Plant, uh, Multi Pass, Snap Heap. They're really phenomenal. Um, okay, so I've got eight names here. We're only gonna have four winners. So what I need to do is narrow this down. So let me just copy these. Exciting, this isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is nice. This is uh, this is uh, we we do the randomness on multiple levels here, so we make sure it's absolutely fair. I'm feeling okay. it for the folks at home. Yeah. Okay. So for the grand prize winner is going to be your favorite number pair between one and ten. Oh, oh, well, that's so easy. That's a seven. That's a seven. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Okay, and I'm just gonna make a note here of which one it is. Okay, and then give me another number between one and eight, excluding seven. I I will take two, please. <laughs> show me two. Yeah. Okay, that's a game show thing. I don't. Okay, that that will be the winner of Phase Plant. All right, next up, one more number, please. Uh, I'm gonna keep on with the magic numbers and say three. Okay, that's a good <clears throat> nail. Okay, I like that, and that will be the winner of Multi Pass. And final number, George. What won't they expect me to say? Five. <laughs> You didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> I mean, you didn't. You didn't give him. You didn't give him an opportunity to. to... <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Before we announce these winners, hit the like button, give the heart in the chat, say thank you to Pear and George for coming through. And not only giving us a robust look at all of their plugins, but allowing us to, you know, give make some people very happy today. Uh, and remember, every Thursday around this time going forward till the end of the year, we're going to be doing live streams. And by the way, Pear and George, when those big things happen, I don't, I forgot the the exact quote is like, I've got to, yeah. you know, <laughs> just wait for it. Whenever that happens, just you wait. Yeah, just you mm-hmm. wait. Uh, go ahead and shoot me an email, and we'll definitely set up another Absolutely. one of this. It's been a we'll lot of that. fun. Yeah, that sounds great. Before we go, can I just plug plug something real quick? Um, yes. If you're interested in Kilohertz uh, plugins and the continued development of them, or you just have questions about usage or anything, 
absolutely find the Killer Hearts Discord channel. It's jam packed oh, nice. of really knowledgeable people who know a lot about the plugins, and we're often hanging out there ourselves, so we can be around and you know have a good time. It's a really great place. It's a it's a pretty big Discord actually by this point, and it's mm. very active. So yeah, check it out. Super cool. I'm on Discord quite and often. We never live stream on Thursdays, so yeah. You yeah, that's can come fair. and join us without missing Plugin Boutique. <laughs> that's fair. That, we'll split it up. There you go. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and announce these winners. Uh, the winner of Snap Heap is Diplomatico Block Royal. Hey. Congratulations. The winner of Multipass is James Quackenbush. Congratulations. Hey. The winner of Phase Plant is Mr. Dirty Harry Zero. And oh, wow. the winner, who I believe has won something before on one of our streams, I could be wrong, is just a kumquat. Wins the Killer Hearts Ultimate Bundle. Let's go point. ahead. Round of applause, everybody. Yay. Phenomenal. Hearts, likes, chats, Great whatever news. it is. If I called your name and you are a winner, all you need to do is email support at pluginboutique.com with your name, what you won, in a screenshot. Very importantly, have you logged in to your account here on uh, YouTube? And it might not be, if you email us today, it might not be a response tomorrow, but we absolutely will get you sorted with your gifts. Obviously, we do each and every time we do one of these streams. But gentlemen, thank you again. Thanks to everybody in the chat for coming through and watching and being absolutely just the best with your questions and your love inside of the chat. And as usual, um, Pear, George, thanks again. Have a great night, great day. I don't know where you are, but whatever's happening next, I hope it goes well for you. <laughs> and yeah, it's I'm been a real pleasure, thank you. All right, great. And I'm Joshua Casper for Plug and Boutique, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Keep striving in every way. Who am I? International, what they call me international. When me ride power with the rhythm, open the rhythm and I come down, cool shot. I me ride power with the man, then we sit down steady. Body me on the place, I wait, they want to have my skin.
international, what they call we international When we ride on rhythm and I'm over the rhythm and I come down crucial And we ride on rhythm and then we sit down steady Fuck the men on the place and wait they want your mouth straight